Welcome back. In last week's vlog, we were dehorning cattle and that seemed to generate a load of interest about disbudding and dehorning. So I've tailored this week's technical to hopefully answer some of those questions. What is dehorning? What is disbudding? And why would we do either? So dehorning is what it sounds like. It's removing the fully grown horn from an animal. Disbudding is the removal of the horn bud that's in much younger animals before that bud has had a chance to become a fully grown horn. So why would we do it? The procedures are commonplace, but there's still plenty of debate, as there should be with any procedure that has the potential to cause pain or discomfort to livestock. In short, they make life both easier and safer for the farmer and the livestock. Cattle with horns can do far more damage to their herd mates and their handlers, they can be more difficult to run through handling systems. They are more difficult to transport. They require more space at feed barriers. They can bruise carcasses shortly before they're sent to slaughter and they're more likely to damage farm infrastructure. So how do we do it? Now, in my mind, there are three main stages and the first and possibly most important is the anesthesia of the region. That is the numbing of the horn region. Specifically, we inject local anesthetic into an area that blocks a specific branch of a specific nerve, and that is the corneal branch of the lacrimal nerve. The end result really is the important thing, and that is a numbing of the area. I'll not go into a practical breakdown of the technique here, we'll save that for another time. It's important to note that this local anaesthetic is a legal requirement for any disbudding or dehorning in the UK, with one exception, which I'll cover later on. Some vets, when they're doing big batches of calves, will also sedate them just to speed up the process and make it easier, safer for everyone involved. Second is actually taking the horn off. The technique used is highly dependent on the size of the horn or the horn bud and therefore is highly dependent on age. This budding in the UK is normally done with a hot iron. We use that to burn and to scoop out the horn bud. Ideally, this budding is done between two and six weeks with a recommended maximum of two months. Dehorning, again, we had a bit of a talk about it in a video, but really it depends on the size of the horns we're taking off. It might be that you're able to use barns scoop dehorners, it might be that you're able to use cup dehorners, you might have to break open the cheese wire. Although some of these instruments can look fairly medieval, we've numbed the area, the animal shouldn't feel a thing at all. Finally, burning or a cautery. So in disbudding, this is actually combined with the removal of the horn bud because we're using the hot iron to physically remove it, so it's burning simultaneously. With dehorning, an iron would normally be applied after you've cut or sawn the horn off. The heat also destroys the corium, which is the horn producing tissue, and that is what prevents regrowth of the horn. After this, normally some sort of antibiotic or aluminium spray is applied. Can we improve it? It's a really important question. Some of you might be familiar with the three R's approach. The three R's are replace, reduce, refine, and it was a framework originally applied to ensure more humane animal research. But we can apply that same framework when we're looking at procedures like disbudding or dishorning. Let's start with refine. As mentioned, there is a legal obligation in the UK to use a local anaesthetic. To ensure we get the most out of that anaesthetic, we should make sure it's injected in the right place. If you're in any doubt, get a vet to show you. It's not complicated, but it's worth getting right. And that we give it enough time to work. So in practice, that probably means an absolute minimum of five minutes and ideally much longer, to 15, 20 minutes. Assuming you're doing more than one animal at a time, to speed the process up, you can run them through, apply the block to all the animals, run them back round, and by the time they've come back round, assuming you're doing them in roughly the same order, the local anaesthetic will have been given a good amount of time to work. Before you actually remove the horn or the horn bud, you can test the area with a clean needle just by giving it a couple of pricks. This just provides some reassurance that you're getting the block right and it's not gonna harm the animal. Now, for further pain relief and to prevent any sort of growth check, many vets, myself included, will go along with the BCVA, that's the British Cattle Veterinary Association recommendation, that we use non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. So that's your anti-inflammatory painkillers. I'll leave it there, apart from saying, I think there's huge scope for using these drugs 
more widely for procedures like this. Reduce is a tricky one because there are strong human and animal welfare arguments for removing horns in most commercial systems in the UK. However, if cattle are run very extensively or handled very infrequently, you could make the argument that on balance, it's better to leave the horns on. For breeds with especially large horns, so that might be your highlands or your longhorns, there are specialist handling facilities available to help facilitate moving those animals through crushes and races. Finally, reduce. This, in my opinion, is probably where the greatest gains could be made. Cattle can be bred to be polled, and polled means without any horns. Some breeds are entirely polled, such as your Aberdeen Angus or Lincoln Red. Other breeds have some individuals that are polled, so that would include Charolais or the South Devon. For the commercial beef herd, the single biggest change you can make is probably buying a polled bull. And that is because, depending on his exact genetics, you're either going to greatly reduce or even eliminate the number of calves in your herd that need disbudding or dehorning. Again, I keep saying this, probably sound like a broken record. We'll dedicate another video to polled cattle and its inheritance. Any other useful tips? Again, there are vets who've been doing this for a long time, much longer than me. In my few years out of practice, this is what I could come up with. So number one, have your kit organized. Again, it's slightly do as I say, not as I do. And that's before you get started. So lay out all your kit, your burner, whatever you're using to remove the horn or horn bud and any other drugs you might be using. Lay them out nice and neatly beforehand. And that includes not having your aerosol cans immediately next to your burner. Second, as always, restraint is king. For little calves, that means either a safe pair of hands or even better, you can get specialist calf crushes for doing jobs just like this. For older animals, really it just comes down to having a decent crush and a good, strong halter. For the really wild ones, if you're a vet, you will have sedation in your arsenal. Don't be afraid to use it. Finally, avoid dehorning in fly weather. Generally, that's when it's warm and wet. If it's borderline or you just can't avoid it, go and talk to your vet and ask whether using an insecticidal product, so that's an anti-fly product, might be appropriate. Right, that was by no means comprehensive. So I have included some links in the description with a caveat that they come from several different countries in which the rules on dehorning and disbudding will vary. So by all means go and follow them, just check the link address when you do. Otherwise, thanks for watching again. If you enjoyed it, hit like, press subscribe. If you've got any further questions, of course your vet is the best person to go and talk to. But if you've got any feedback or you just wanna have a chit chat, just post a comment below. It's great to see people watching, engaging, helps more people see the videos. So as I said, by all means, leave a comment.